look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight We make mistakes, we're learning from this In hindsight be your today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now have you ever wondered how unlocking trapped emotions can lead to a profound personal transformation and joy? Well, today I have Farzan Mazanani, an award-winning author and joyfulness transformation coach, whose journey from a dark locked room to discovering the ultimate truth within himself is nothing short of inspiring. Farzan's experiences and his creation of joyful, joyful fix quantum healing make him the perfect guest for Hindsight, the podcast. Good morning, or what time is it? And where are you calling from, Farzan? I'm calling from Toronto, Canada, and it's 11 a.m. right now. <laughs> oh, good. So it's not too bad for you. It's it's a, a normal day. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming on and, you know, joining joining with me on an early, not so early for you, Sunday morning. Uh, but I gave a little bit of uh, of a introduction, but I didn't really speak a lot about you. Now, remember, this is Hindsight the Podcast, so we want to know a little bit about little baby boy Farzan uh, and then where he is today, right? So just tell us just a little bit about you just to get the show started. Sure. So little baby boy was 12 years old. Yeah, I'm going to start from there. So yes, sir. I was 12 years old and... Everything on the outside was uh, the way that it should be for a 12 years old, taken care of, lovely parents, loving parents, and good schools, and everything was fine, except for mm -hmm. one thing. I had some questions that I couldn't get answered. And when I would ask those questions from my parents, from the, my teachers, and from my friends, Nobody could answer those questions. And those uh, questions was, what is the source of true joy? And why am I here? What I'm doing in here? It is odd for mm -hmm. a 12-year-old to ask those questions, I know. But somehow I was tangled with those in our mind <clears throat> and I couldn't let it go. So I was trying to find answers to those questions. And at the time, there was no internet. There was no YouTube to, you could search or something like that. I'm talking about a long time ago. And <laughs> so I had to rely on books. That's what I did. I went through book after book after book. In a period of 12 years, when I was 20, 24 years old, I had a library of thousands of books in my own house. Mm -hmm. And I went through about 20 different paths whatever i could get hold of get my hand on to find the truth the, the ultimate truth i was not satisfied with the shadow of the truth i wanted mm -hmm. to go to the source of all truth so i was serious and after 20 after 12 years you would imagine that i gained a lot of knowledge but i'm telling you I was even more confused after 20, <laughs> I was 24 years, more confused. What is the meaning of life? What is the source of true joy? And mm. I wanted to find those. So I did, I made a radical decision. I said that I'm going to go to a room and it's going to be a windowless room. I'm not going to be finding what is happening on the outside world. I'm going to isolate myself in that room close the door, turn the light off. I'm going to stay there until I find the answer. So because I was serious. So that is what I, I went to my mm -hmm. uncle and he had a big house and there was a room in the basement with a washroom inside, no windows. That was the perfect set for me. So I wanted to go in and he said, I, I, I shared my plan with him and he was liberal he accepted me to just do that crazy thing but mm -hmm. he said that you might be dead i said why see he said you might be dead from hunger because you don't know <laughs> you're telling me you don't know where when you're gonna coming mm -hmm. out of that room so mm -hmm. you might 
be dead in a way and not finding whatever you're looking for. I, I said, yes, he is right. He is smarter than me. So I went to the market and bought some raisin, green raisin, mm. and took it mm -hmm. to the room. So I closed the door, turned the light off. I went through some experiences. After a while, you're isolated from outside world. There is no light. There is no sound and you can't hear it, anything. And you are facing yourself in that scenario mm -hmm. with your thoughts mm -hmm. and there is nothing else. So a lot of experiences came up during that time, but didn't take me to whatever I wanted. But after close to five days, I came out of the room. And the reason was the experience that I had in there. What was the experience? I'm sitting in there. My eyes are closed. Everything is dark. And all of a sudden, I felt a warmness in my heart and like a flame that was in my heart. And then it spread throughout my body. I felt mm. that my cells are burning. And mm -hmm. I, was, I started sweating badly and shaking. And all of a sudden, the scenario changed. I was connected to the light and the sound that was coming from inside me. Outside, it was absolute darkness and absolute silence. But the sound mm -hmm. and light was coming from inside me. That was an experience that I cannot even describe how it was. Because the feeling that I had was that I am connected to everything and everyone. I don't mm -hmm. need to stay in here in isolation mm -hmm. because I know all the answers. I received mm -hmm. all the answers from inside. So I came out and my cl conclusion was that whatever that I was looking for on the outside, I was looking for in a wrong place because it was all inside. So that is mm -hmm. the story of Acres of Diamonds. I don't know if you know that story. The farmer in Africa went to find, sold his uh, farm to go and find diamonds all over the world. And he was dead after a while, he couldn't find a diamond. And the, the one who bought the farm was digging. One day he found a piece of a stone, polished it. It was shiny, took, <laughs> took it to the jeweler. And it was the largest mine, diamond mine in Africa. So the mm. first farmer was sitting on it, was looking for, looking for it. So that is the same story for us. We're looking for right. the knowledge, but we have to find the wisdom. There is a difference mm. between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom is the top-down approach. Mm -hmm. Knowledge mm -hmm. is bottom-up. Knowledge is like putting the pieces of puzzle together to find out what the picture is. And wow. then wisdom is just somebody just shows us that picture. We know mm. what it is. Right, Imagine right. that you're in a dark room and you examine everything in a dark room and you ex you just guess what is in the room because you cannot see that mm -hmm. is knowledge but yeah. wisdom is somebody just turns off the light and you see everything in there mm, you know yeah. you know instantly okay. what is in there so that was the first thing that i experienced i was connected to the source of knowledge and the second one was the true source of joy which is inside because there is a difference between happiness and joy as well. After that experience, I found out happiness depends upon outer circumstances. Some events, some people make us happy, but we might mm -hmm. face some challenges and we, we become sad and become miserable and stuff. We switch between happiness and sadness, but joy is coming from inside and it doesn't have any opposite. I found about that that truth that was inside me. So that was my first breakthrough in life at the age 24. But that was not the only one because after a while, you are connected to the source of light, but after a mm -hmm. while, it might fade away because you are in a society, you're dealing with other people and things, ups and downs mm -hmm. of life. So I had another breakthrough after a while. Okay. Let's hold on. Sure. Let's hold on. Let's let's revisit some of these. See, let's go in hindsight. It's 12 years old. You're super inquisitive. You want to know the meaning of life. You want to know what joy is, all of these things. What led you? Was there some experiences in your life that led you to want to know what joy is and what the meaning of life is? Um, so 
when I think about the, the trigger mm-hmm. that I had that took me to that route was a couple of questions that I asked from my teacher. So mm-hmm. he was in a class and he was explaining about the concept of God, that God is uh, knows everything, has all the power and is pure love or something like that. And he explained about hell and heaven and those kind of concepts that they usually mm-hmm. teach in the schools. I was thinking about it. And then I asked my teacher, so let's say that God has all the power. You have, you say that God has all the power. And he said, yes. And then I asked, you say that God, God knows everything. Mm-hmm. He said, yes. And I asked, if God knows everything, when God wants to create someone, he knows if that person is going to go to hell or heaven because he knows everything. He knows mm-hmm. the future of that soul or something like that. He said, yes. And I said, if God knows that that person is going to go to hell and be buried in there forever and, this, and creates that person, it doesn't make sense to me because mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. on the opposition of whatever you say that God is pure love. Right. What, how, how come some, some uh, power that is pure love would go ahead and create a soul that he knows that he is going to go to hell forever and he's going to be burned Mm -hmm. and punished. So it doesn't make sense. And he said, shut up. Don't ask those kind of questions. You're not allowed to ask those kind of questions. That's that, that was what the answer that I received. And I repeated that question to the other other people as well. Nobody could answer me that basic yeah. question that I had. So it, it, it wouldn't make sense. I couldn't analyze, put the two and two together to find the answer for that. I couldn't find the answer there. So I decided to just find the ultimate truth. That was mm. the source of the trigger that caused me to go through that route. Did you, did you go to school in Toronto? No, I was back home in Iran at the time. You're in Iran, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, that would that would do it. I remember um, not going and locking myself in a room, but actually, absolutely having those questions when you're presented with these ideologies as a child, it doesn't make sense. But I believe as you grow up, you become conformed uh, to all the concepts and all the beliefs. Now. You know, now it's forward, you know, 2024 and you're not dispelling anybody's religion. But now you have an opportunity to view different viewpoints and different studies. Five days in the dark, your uncle let you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, Actually, and you went and got... I told him, he's, he says, he says, how long is going to take? You were going to go. I you said, didn't know. I'm going to go to the room. He says, how long is it going to take? I said, it might take two days, two weeks, two months. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That was my answer. And he said, are you crazy? I said, yeah, a little bit. And he said, why are you <laughs> doing this? And I explained about whatever I went through. I couldn't find the answer. And he said, if you want to try it, I'm just going to let you try it. But I have mm-hmm. to take care of your mom because he is going to kill me. And he right, did right. that. I, my uncle actually did that. And I'm, I'm, I just appreciate the space that he provided for me to be able to flourish. Absolutely. As, Absolutely. Yeah. Why did you choose raisins? Because I had some studies and I found that raisin provides most of the nutrition that you need for your body. Mm-hmm. I had that mm-hmm. study. I knew that. I, as I uh-huh. told you, I, I, had, I had thousands of books in my <laughs> library. So I studied everything. I love it. I love it. Hey, I tell you, you hit, you hit on something that I, I never really thought about. You said happiness required an external and it has an opposite, unhappy. Mm-hmm. But joy is internal and there is no opposite exactly. to joy. Yeah. Dude, that is, that is, I never really looked at the word joy, three letter word. 
enjoy and actually broke it down. So I'm glad I'm talking to to you, Mr. Thousand Plus Books, before the <laughs> age of 20, <laughs> before the age of 24, and some insight. So that is something that I can take with me and build off of just that knowledge of right. internalizing, you know, looking for that joy within and understanding there is no there is no opposite to that. And mm -hmm. I'm going to explore that. I wrote that down because that really that really resonated with me. So 24, I like the 12 and then 24. So you got some 12s in there. So I need to figure out what the numbers mean. But mm -hmm. can you describe the moment when you felt that spark when on that fifth day? How did you feel and how did it change your life? So the feeling was there is no separation. Mm -hmm. All is one and one is all. That was the feeling that I had. And it was a beautiful feeling. Yeah. The connection that I had with myself and with the whole life, I couldn't differentiate between things because I felt that I'm like that drop in the ocean that is connected to all the other drops. There is no mm -hmm. separation. When there is a drop that is outside of that ocean, it is striving to back to go back to the ocean. So it falls down into the ocean and all of a sudden you are in there connected to everything and everyone. So that was yeah. the feeling. It's hard to explain it, but yeah. maybe metaphorically I can just uh, elaborate on that. So we might mm -hmm. just get something out of it. All right. How did day three in the dark, and you can pick day two, three, four, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to know how it felt in the middle of that process. What were you feeling? Were you feeling discouraged? Were you feeling hopeful? How did that feel in those moments? So I was practicing whatever I learned different meditations because I, as, mm -hmm. I, as I said, I went through different paths, Zen mm -hmm. Buddhism, Buddhism and um, Taoism and Sufism, shamanism, whatever you name it. I went through a lot of paths and I knew a lot of techniques that I could practice during that time. And sometimes I would just do those and then nothing would happen, but nothing substantial that gets me out of room would happen. So mm. I continued that frustration that I had with those things. And so that thing, that experience that I had came out of nowhere. When I, yeah. when I released everything, when I said that I cannot do that anymore, I cannot do this anymore. So I just let it go. When you let it go, then everything opens mm. up. So that is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you are yeah. trying to achieve something, that thing goes away from you. Mm. And that is the rule. They, so the rule is basically like this. When I try to do something, something is important for me. I'm just mm -hmm. going to go and do something. Let's, let's say I'm, I'm going to go to a job interview. That interview right. is very important. I've been out of work for a while and now I got a chance to go to an interview and then it's very important for me. And then I prepare and just go. And the time is, let's say 10 AM, the mm -hmm. time of the interview. I either have a car or I have to take the bus. So I go outside waiting for the bus to come. And I'm so early because I want to go to the interview on time. I wait and the boss doesn't come on time mm -hmm. and I'm worried and what's happening and stuff like that. Or I'm in a car driving mm. in a highway and all of a sudden there is traffic. I yeah. didn't expect that during the day. Why that kind of things happen? Because it is important for us to, to have that moment. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we are worried what's going to happen if I don't get to that interview. That fear goes bigger and bigger and bigger and prevents us 
to have the experiences that we want. So yeah. it is called the law of reverse effort. Okay. When you love when you try to do something, it is usually opposite. For example, I'm on my bike on a road, and all of a sudden I see that there are some stones on the road, and I try to prevent it. I see that there are lots of ways that I can go around, but at the end of the road, I went on all those stones. <laughs> Why? Why? Because that is the law of reverse effort. Mm. Why it happens? Because we have that fear that what if that thing doesn't happen? So and yeah. it gets bigger and bigger and creates a barrier. So our mind is so powerful; it can create traffic, it can create the boss to come late. You know, <laughs> we have that power. But the thing is that soon as we say that I'm gonna be late, I cannot do anything about it. Mm, yep. All of a sudden. Yep. The boss shows up. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. the traffic is gone. So that is the key. When you want to achieve something, plan for it, go for it, but release the results. Don't get stuck in the results that I have to be there in that time in specific. I like it. You say that I do my best and leave the rest. Yeah. So you just leave the end open because that neutralizes that law of reverse effort so mm -hmm. that is very important to to when you want to do something that is a key yeah i'll tell you what that resonates uh traffic out here in in the la area is is horrible and sometimes i do have to drive up into that that space and while you were talking about it i actually recall sometimes i'm like oh, i gotta get there and you plan it out and you put gps and it looks like you're going to get there and then there's an accident and traffic starts to slow down and start breathing heavy and you got your stomach getting hot and all of these different mm -hmm. feelings and emotions. And then you just, you know, me personally, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. Uh, I'll get there eventually. And I'll usually get there usually, you know, unless it's a pretty bad accident right on time. Yeah. So it's, it's funny that you say that because I experience that pretty regularly and I try not to get into my emotions uh, when these things are happening. I don't know if I should, but I'm going to ask you anyway. So you can decline or you can answer. It's not a, it's not a horrible uh, question, but as a child and you, you were, you were being schooled, you, you grew up in Iran. Yep. Iran is, is a pretty religious and I don't know, maybe it's, maybe that's not the word, right word, but religious state, right? Yeah. Did you get in any kind of pushback when you were having these thoughts, like questioning these teachings? Did, was there any negative recourse? from you just questioning besides the guy saying shut up and, and go <laughs> write a mm -hmm. paper right yeah yeah it, it was because mm -hmm. some some cultures and some countries and some uh beliefs they don't allow you to just speak your mind they yeah. say that you are in this frame of thought or frame of work and you have to stay in there you're not allowed to question a lot of things and yeah. that was one of the reasons that I decided to get out of that country because freedom of speech is important to me. I want to express whatever, whoever I am, mm -hmm. because that is being authentic is important. You know, you don't want to play roles based on whatever others impose to you. And I was yeah. in that stage that I didn't, I wasn't comfortable playing roles. Yeah. I wanted to be myself. So that was the main reason that I came out, you know. How old were, how old were you when you left? I was 31 years old. Now let's talk about your studies. What led you to become a certified emotion code practitioner? I've never heard of it. And a belief clearing practitioner. So what led you to become it? But more importantly, Tell us what they are. Okay, sure. So yes, sir. the story behind me becoming an emotion code practitioner, I went to Canada and uh, so I had to forget about all my credentials. Back home as an engineer, I had a good job and everything was fine. But I, as I told you, I wasn't comfortable to be in that frame. Yeah. So I came out. 
I had a comfortable job that I could keep forever and those kind of things. I was provided with even a chauffeur to go to the job and come back home and stuff. So it's a different environment. I came to Canada. I had to forget about all my achievements, all my credentials. It was right after 9-11, actually. And the economy okay. was bad. You mm -hmm. couldn't find the proper job and we had to just survive. So I started one of the first jobs that I was doing was uh, heavy on my body. And I wasn't used to do those kind of things. My body mm -hmm. was not prepared for those kind of things because usually people in their 80s, eight, 18 or 20 years old, young people go to those kind of jobs and then they their body adapt to that situation. But I was old, 31 years old and wasn't mm -hmm. ready for those kind of things. So I injured my upper back at the yep. job. It was a big injury. And that injury was a specific injury because I lost my job after I had to go find something else. And so I found something else and I went to the doctors and therapy. I was better, but the only problem that I had was that my back problem would come every week. So, mm -hmm. and so it was a chronic pain. I would freeze, my upper back would freeze. I couldn't move my neck or something like that. I mm -hmm. had to go to physiotherapy to release it. And then I, understand I, would, that. I would yeah. be fine for a couple of weeks. And then it, it would happen again. And I would go to the specialist. They took the exam, the MRI results, and they say that we, we can't find anything in there. All the muscles are in good shape and everything is fine. So they couldn't point the fingers on the specific problems that they had. And they said that uh, you can take this medication and that medication. It would help a little bit, but not much. So mm -hmm. nobody could help me much. So I was carrying that pain for 15 years. After 15 years, you're established, you have your house and the car and those kind of things. Everything is fine, but I had that problem. So one day a friend, came over and we were talking and she was supposed to do something for my wife. And I, I explained the situation and she said, maybe I can help you. And I said that you're not a specialist. How can you help me? She said, there's no harm. Let's do something and I'll see the results. So she gave me a few, a couple of phone calls. And she said that I'm releasing the trapped emotions that you are carrying related the pain that you have, the chronic pain. Because when we have a pain that is more than six months, it means it is chronic, it is the definition of chronic pain. But all the cells in our body are changed by six months because mm. we dispense our cells and this new cells replace them. So they're all new cells. So it cannot be physical. It's something else behind it. So he said yeah. that there are trapped emotions that we carry. Everybody carries more than 200 trapped emotions. And I asked, yeah. what is the trapped emotion? She says that it is unprocessed emotion that we carry. For example, mm. you're driving back home from work and you're tired and somebody cut you off in the traffic and you, you get mad and start sweating and get angry. And then when you go home, you're talking to other people in the household about the crazy drivers in the road, on the road and those kind of things. And we are mentalizing that scenario. And then mm -hmm. our subconscious mind says that I'm not going to process it, finish processing it. I'm just going to store it somewhere in your body and deal with it later. So it becomes a trap emotion. Now we are carrying a vibration of anger in our body. Wow. And that's why we get, we snap on small things with no reason because we are carrying that vibration. And it's not just one vibration that we're carrying. On average, everybody's carrying 200 of those. Yeah. And those are weighing us down. They are bringing us down because the vibration is lower than the average vibration that we have in our body. So we are carrying those and it's affecting our organs, it's affecting our immune system, it's affecting everything. For example, grief or let's say there are lots of emo emotions like failure. 
failure. Mm, I go to yeah. the school and I fail on an exam and then I start my I'm, I'm blamed by my parents. I start I start to talking to my friends about that and stuff. I mentalize it and it becomes a trapped emotion. And I mm. have I carry that trap emotion of failure with me. So that is an emotion <clears throat> I'm carrying all the time. It's not just sometimes. My life is painted based on those, you know? We are hey. having those kind of emotions and our life is painted based on those. I, I got a real quick question. Sure. I got a real I got a real quick question. So I'm trying to figure out because I thought like if you have these emotions and you're upset, someone cuts you off and then you talk about it with someone, a lot of times we internalize and we keep it within ourselves. But when you release it and talk, I thought maybe that got rid of that emotion. So you're telling me that that, that doesn't really get rid of that trapped emotion. No, because wow. we have something called prefrontal cortex. Yep. Because mm -hmm. we, that separates us from animals. We mm -hmm. think about different scenarios. We think about things that happen to us. And then it gets them stuck because it's, it becomes an image in our subconscious mm -hmm. mind because uh, you have that in picture and then you have the feeling that is attached to that picture. Those two combine, get combined and get a stock in our head, in our subconscious mm -hmm. mind. And we carry those, those pictures. It becomes a vibration that we carry. Mm -hmm because of the emotions that is involved in that. But if we let it go, if something happens to me, I, I let it go. Don't pay attention to it. It doesn't get stuck. We process it. We have the ability to mm. process it, but sometimes we don't let it go. Yeah. We just get stuck in there. So that creates those kind of moments for depression, for anxiety, for stress, yeah. for whatever you name it. And the, the most important one is guilt and shame. We carry those because we are programmed by our parents, mm -hmm. by the society, by the school, by everything that you have to be shameful for your mistakes and those kind of things. And we carry that energy of shame, which is very low in vibration. It brings us down. And nobody's talking about it. The source of mm. a lot of problems that we have is related to shame and guilt that we carry. And it is sometimes advertised as a good thing, but actually it brings you down. So mm. I became familiar with those. And she said that I see that you can do the same thing for others. So what happened was she released those and my pain was gone. I was expecting it to come back, but never came back. And I was amazed by that, by that process. He just released those all over the phone and I was fine. And I was amazed by those. Things. Over the, she released it how? Over the phone? Yeah, over the phone. Because I'm that thinking is you got to lay down and, I'm thinking you got to lay down and have some massage and acupuncture and all these different things to release. So it's, wow. Yeah. So you're not going to, you're not going to tell me because this is your thing, right? Like, Give me a little, a little bit of how do you release these trapped emotions? You don't have to give me a whole patented, you sure, know, how so, you go about it. So there's someone called Dr. Bradley Nelson, who just mm -hmm. came up with that modality emotion code. And he has mm -hmm. a book related to that. And then, uh, so based on his experience, there are ways that we can release those kind of trapped emotions. If we find the exact emotion that is affecting you, which is usually registered in your subconscious mind. The address is in your subconscious mind so we can find where it is and what it is. When mm. you find it, there are ways we use uh, magnet, uh, actually specific uh, magnets to release those emotions because magnet mm. is like this. You take your laptop to the airport, they put it under the machine to scan whatever you have in your suitcase and your laptop comes out and sometimes all the information is wiped out. Yeah. Because they have strong magnets in there to scan mm -hmm. the things. So information under the effect of magnetic field can be released, mm -hmm. can be okay. wiped out.
So great metaphors, yeah. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is the way that we use uh, we use a specific type of uh, medical magnets to release mm-hmm. those. But uh, so, you know, there is a process. There is a process for that. So okay. he said that you have the talent to do the same thing for others. And mm-hmm. then I thought, you know, I can, I can think about it. And it, I was amazed by that process because as an engineer, I couldn't mentalize it. It was beyond my analytical mind, you know, I couldn't mm-hmm. grasp it. But I had the experience firsthand how it worked. A couple of sessions, all the pain for 15 years was gone. So, mm. and he did some, she did something else too. She released my heart wall. So what is heart wall? Heart, heart wall okay. is another important concept that not many people know about. So heart wall is a shield, protective shield that we create to protect our heart. Why we want to protect our heart? Have you heard about uh, broken heart syndrome? Mm-hmm. So some people have broken heart syndrome. So broken heart syndrome, the uh, what you feel, the symptoms are exactly like heart attack. You go to the hospital, you say that I have heart attack. You, they say, what are, what are you experiencing? You explain. And they said, yeah, you might have a heart attack. Let's go and examine. They examine and you have broken heart syndrome, not heart attack. The, the symptoms are exactly the same. So what yeah. is broken heart syndrome? A couple of years ago, a Japanese scientist found out that there are some cracks on the heart, like the small, tiny lines. Like when you crack your bone, when they put it under the x-ray, they see those lines, you know? The same mm-hmm. thing is on our heart. And those are the cracks that we experience in the process of heartbreak. And so it's physical. It's actually wow. physical. They can right. see that, you know? So okay. heart is very sensitive and we have to protect it. Mm-hmm. How do we protect it? When there is a breakup, when there is a grief, some loss in the family or something like that, yeah. Our heart is under pressure. We have to protect it. So our subconscious mind says that in order to protect it, I'm going to create a shield around it. Mm-hmm. So the subconscious mind goes away, goes and grabs those trapped emotions and builds a shelter around our heart. And then we are fine for during that process of breakup or something like that. But what happens after we carry that shield for, with us forever. And more than 93% of people, based mm-hmm. on the research that Dr. Bradley Nelson has done, have the heart wall. And yeah. they are living in self-made prisons in the society. Because it, it is like we are under attack, our country, mm-hmm. and then we go to the shelter, the bomb shelter, and now 10 years has passed from the war, we are still living in that shelter because mm. we don't have any communication with other world. We are still living in that shelter. The feeling is exactly like this. We are living wow. like that. We cannot have the direct communication with ourselves and others and life. We are separated because our life is in trap in, in mm. that confinement. You know, <clears throat> find the space. So that is called heart wall. So she released my heart wall as well as part of the wow. process that we do in emotion code. Mm-hmm. What happened was my life changed. Because before okay. that, I was very shy. I would go to a party. I wouldn't talk to anybody. And specifically, when someone new was in there, I couldn't communicate mm-hmm. with people. I would go to a store looking for something, I would never go to the assistant in the store to ask where this item is. If I couldn't find it, I would go out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was in that scenario before, but Mm -hmm. after it was completely changed. Mm. I came out of my shell Mm -hmm. and 
when you come out of your shell, it is like coming out of the jail. The whole world is in front of you. Yeah. It is totally different feeling and you have the meaning, you have everything in life and you have the joy and you have everything. So that was another breakthrough that I had. So I decided to do the same thing for others. I started working mm -hmm. in that field, became a uh, emotion code, certified emotion code practitioner. And as I was working on people, I noticed that sometimes I release those emotions, but they have to come along with that expanded consciousness as well. So it is not enough just to release those. That's why right. I created my own modality, which is called Joyful Fixed Quantum Healing. So, all right, Farzan, good gracious, you are. I'm going. I got all these questions, and you're rolling through it, so I can almost just sit here and just listen to you. So, here's my next question: What inspired you to create Joy, Joyful Fixed Quantum Healing, and how does it work? All right, go ahead and continue. Sure. <laughs> yeah, the reason was that I wanted people to change their view. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If I say that life is miserable <clears throat> and life is hostile, yeah. what I experience is the hostility in the world. Because whatever we put our attention on, we get more of. That is, uh, there's something which yeah. is called uh, RAS, reticular activating system. So, mm -hmm. When something is important, you pay attention. You buy a new car and you see the same type of car all over the mm -hmm. place. And you wonder yeah. where do those cars were before. I couldn't see that. Now I see all those. So when something is important to you, you pay attention to that. And mm -hmm. then have that definition that life is hostile. You see more of that. And then you are in the fight or flight mode all the time. You are under stress. You feel threatened by people, by the scenario, by scenarios, by, by everything. But if I change my definition and I say yeah. that life is my friend, even if I don't see the gift that I am receiving right now, it is an ugly experience. I know that it is a gift wrapped in an ugly paper. And then you change and the name of your show is hindsight. Yeah. It means that when we look back a few years after the problems that we had, we see the importance of that in our life. We, we couldn't recognize it at the time, yeah. but later on we can recognize it. So it takes us to the conclusion that life is supporting me, not hurting me. When you mm -hmm. have that kind of mindset, what happens? You are more con connected with yourself, with others in life. You, you live a yeah. better life. You're not in that stress mode all the time that everybody wants to hurt you. You are in rest and digest instead of fight or flight. Right. So it is <clears throat> a much happier life. A much better life. So with just changing the definition, you can change your life. I give you another example. When I talk uh -huh. to people, I, I tell them, so what is the meaning of success to you? Mm. Success is different to every person. But most people say that when I reach my goal, I feel I'm successful. And I tell them, it means that you are having you're living a miserable life because how many times you are on top of the pod podium, successful, reach your goal. How many times in your life, momentary experiences that we have most right. of the time we are not in there. So most of the time we are not successful. So we are miserable, but let's change the definition. We say that let's say that success means moving toward a worthy goal with joy. Then every time mm. that you are moving toward your goal, you feel successful. So you can be successful most of your life. Change your definition, change your life. That is not rocket science. Man, Shif. Yeah. Wow. So, so when I combine those 
with the removing all those inner blocks and so on mm -hmm. i bring people along on the expanded consciousness space the things that they are carrying that bring them down i release those and then mm -hmm. help them to develop that kind of mindset to change a different view towards themselves yeah. and others in life so you told us yours can you share a success story of someone that you help with your joyful fix quantum healing sure so there was a lady mm -hmm. and a successful lady young lady but successful she was a director and she, for the movies and stuff and she was very successful she was an artist too mm -hmm. paintings and poetry and those kind of things and by the society it, she was very successful and to herself she was successful too and all of a sudden she was facing with a dilemma there was a tumor the cancerous tumor mm. that she found that she has mm -hmm. and she didn't expect that because she was he she was eating healthy yeah and she was doing fine and she told me that she quit eating sugar a couple of years back and she was so healthy in into the eating healthy and stuff she didn't expect that impact that that thing that happened to her at the top of the success that she had she had that problem she couldn't deal with it okay she cried and cried and cried but somehow she was connected to me from some through somebody else and we talked and i told her that we might be able to do something about it and i explained that the cancerous cell is just the regular cell with a little bit of difference instead of going out of the body after their life is over there is a change in there's the the structure of the cell so it spreads instead of going mm -hmm. out and i explained the concepts and then i start working on her immune system because when mm -hmm. we have all of us carry those cancer cells mm -hmm. but our immune system is taking care of it because it's strong right and in an optimized level is a strong but what if it is not optimized it's not using its potential then there are some problems that that's why we get uh, those disease or something like that so right. i told her i'm gonna work on your immune system and then we see what happens so in order to do that i had to reset a few organs that that is related to the immune system like thymus gland and the other related things that is in the immune system. You know, I had to work on them individually, release the trap emotions through whatever that is gathered in there and reset those organs and then okay. help her out to boost up her immune system. So I measured her immune system was working under 10% of capacity mm. at the time. So mm -hmm. I took it over 80% and mm. she started feeling better a little bit we talked at the same time for a mm. while about perspective in life and she said i feel better but the doctors in here don't let me to go and do another test because they say that we have the test we need to see the things we have to just do the surgery and whatever that we have to do i asked her is it possible for you to just do the test in any ways she said that I have the residency for another country as well in Germany. Okay. And she said, okay. that I'm going to go there and see what happens. So she moved there and the doctors mm -hmm. wanted to do the test again. So they right. did the test and they couldn't find the tumor. Mm -hmm. The tumor was gone. And she was amazed by the process. <clears throat> they went ahead and did the surgery anyways. They couldn't find the tumor. But they did the surgery because they said it's protocol. We have to do it. We, we don't, wow. it's, it's not acceptable, something like that. Because so, but the thing is that she was cured after a while. And yeah. 
what changed happened to her was before that all her perspective was to the negativity the paintings were were black the mm. the poetry were negative the yeah. films that he she was directing was on a negative themes or something like that but after okay. her perspective changed shifted everything yeah. bright everything <laughs> full of love and positive positivity yeah. so it shifts not only her problem uh -huh. but her consciousness and it was a transformational experience for her got it good good well that's who that's power that's power mm -hmm. So I appreciate you uh, sharing that. Now, you were healed, at least mentally, yeah. I guess, for your back pain. So you're feeling better. You're helping other people out. Then you had this skiing accident. Yeah. How did that affect you personally mm -hmm. and professionally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is my third breakthrough that I had. After mm -hmm. those two major ones, I was you know the number three <laughs> you always have everything in three so so what happened was i i went skiing and i fell down and i broke my shoulder mm -hmm. so i went to the doctor doctor is examining the mri tests and he says that what did you do to yourself and i say i, I just went to skiing he says i'm only seen this kind of fracture on the scapula in car accidents because the impact should be so high that you cannot break it in just a skiing and i told him i was a skiing on a flat surface and i have more mm. than 40 years experience of skiing and i was going slow and nobody was around me all of a sudden i fell down with no reason just like mm. I was hit by a lightning. I was flat yeah. on the surface with no reason. And I, I was right. trying to get up and I noticed I cannot move my left arm. So mm -hmm. I came, I went to the emergency, they took the x-rays and the result was I had a fractured the scapula. And the doctor says that I cannot do much uh, because I cannot cast it. It's somewhere that we cannot cast it muscle all around it we cannot do much about it it has to be cured by itself and it might take a long time six months or so but i can give you the strongest painkillers that i have because every movement slow movement small movement yeah. you're gonna cry yeah. from pain so he gave me all those painkillers i came home with a box of painkillers and what happened was I knew based on my perspective in life that life is giving me one of those precious gifts in an ugly paper again. So I knew there's something about this experience. So I said to myself, I cannot do the regular things that I do. I cannot do much with my left arm, but mm -hmm. wait a minute, I can use my right hand, but still I can use it. So I, I thought maybe it's better to start writing the book that I have been carrying with me, me on mm -hmm. the inside all these years, the breakthroughs, experiences, maybe it's the time for that. So I went to the basement and started writing. After 12 hours, 14 hours, my wife comes and she says that you're still in here and said, yes. And she says, did you? take the painkillers. I said, what painkillers? Mm. I forgot about pain. I forgot about eating. I forgot about sleeping. I, I didn't know if it's day <laughs> or night. I was in it. It was the definition of flow state, being in the zone. Mm. Right. Every, every valuable thing that you see that is still around after many years is the results of the creation that has happened during that that kind of state i knew wow. about it mentally yeah but i didn't have direct experience so it was a pleasant experience in order to avoid pain i started writing and writing and writing in two mm -hmm. weeks i produced a lot of writing i sent it to the publisher the publisher said why did you write this much how can we fit it in a book 
Cut it. They cut made it me to cut it out and cut it out and cut it out. I wrote for two weeks, finished my book, but the editing took longer than writing it because you know? <laughs> I had to cut it off. So my book was published very fast. Mm-hmm. And so because it was in that state, you get the information that is even new for you because you are directly connecting to the source of wisdom, which is in your heart. Yeah. And I always say every one of us is one idea away from being a multimillionaire because mm. how those kind of things happen that some, someone brings an idea, a new noble idea that was never done before and act on it and build a business out of it and gets that far. It's just one idea. It's we are one idea away. But when our heart is closed up, we have the heart wall. We don't let mm. that shield doesn't let that idea to come out because the source of wisdom is in our heart. I found it yeah. when I was 24 years old. I had to go there by force to open <laughs> the door of my heart. You know, I had to go force myself, force the situation. Wow. But later on, I found out there are easier way as well. It is called mm. joyful fix. That's why I call my practice joyful fix. It can be joyful. Mm-hmm. When I release the heart wall, you have access to that source of wisdom. All those like million wow. dollar, billion dollar ideas are there. Yeah, yeah. We all have that. And then what happens is, so in my book, I explain about three types of stagnation. So the first one is the static stagnation. When you don't even feel like to get out of bed mm-hmm. because of the situation that you're facing, it's bigger than you. So you feel that I'm... I don't feel like to come and face the reality and stuff. So you get stuck in there. We all have those moments. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're that busy that we go and sleep. We just don't want to face all the things that we have to do, you know? Yeah, so we have yeah. that kind of things. It's called the static yeah. stagnation. So the, okay. the other type of stagnation is dynamic stagnation. Dynamic stagnation is when you are moving, but you're moving on a circle. It's like mm. a hamster wheel. And Mm -hmm, we go mm -hmm. to work and do something, come back home, do the regular things that we do at home in the morning. You just get get ready and go to work again. And then you look back, your life is gone. You haven't achieved anything. No excitement, no impact, nothing. So you just wasted your life. Slow and steady to the finish line. So, and that is the society. Yeah, sometimes the society promotes that as well. They say that you have to go to school, you have to get a degree, Mm -hmm. and you have to Mm -hmm. go and work in a corporate world and stuff and stay there. But we look back, there's no excitement, there's no joy, there is no uh, impact, waste of life. So we say that I want to get out of this trap. How can I get out of this trap? So we say that in order to get out of this trap, I have to get out of my comfort zone. That's what everybody says. As as Mm. long as I'm comfortable in here, I'm not going to be achieving anything. I have to get out of my comfort zone. And some people say, we have to try this. We have to try that. And I say, when you say, I have to try this, it means it's never going to be done. When you Mm. say try, it means that you are still stuck in the comfort zone. You don't want to make that big shift. So they say that, so we change it to, I do my best. And I say, mm. <laughs> if you do your best, you go ahead and then something happens that is larger than your best and you stop, you're stopping there. We cannot proceed. Right. So I say, they say, so everybody says that if you want to do something important, you have to do it no matter what. You have to be a fighter. You have to go through the barriers. And then I say, yeah, that is what we've heard. And right. that is a way to get out of your comfort zone. But the question is, is that the best way? I'll give you an example. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, people in the business, successful people. 
on top of their game. And they have that emptiness inside. They are not happy. I've okay. seen a lot of those guys, <clears throat> they have health issues because of the stress and anxiety that they had to go through to build that business. Yeah. I see a lot of those guys with broken relationships because they didn't spend enough time to curate their relationships. They spent all of their times on their business. So they came to that success with a price. Price might be happiness, health, or relationship. Is this mm -hmm. the best way? That is the question. So what is that that we can do differently to enjoy the ride, enjoy the path of success? Because everybody says that. You have to enjoy mm -hmm. the path of success. So, but how? How can we do that? The question is, how can we do that? Because if we do that perspective that I have to go and fight and fight and fight, what happens? We are fighting with our own con subconscious mind. Because the programming that we have is whatever that has brought us in here, all the images, mm -hmm. all the habits, all the thoughts that we had, all the emotions that we had, that is what has brought us in here. And now we want to change the direction. So we're battling with our subconscious mind. Subconscious okay. mind is like a train that is moving south. And we are in a train. All of a sudden, we decide to move north. We walk mm -hmm. towards north, but we are still in the train. Where do we end mm. up? South, of course. South, because the train course. is going south. So we are battling with our subconscious mind. When subconscious mind do something, for every second, there are 20 to 40 million neurons fired in our brain when we do something consciously between 20 to 40 neurons are fired in our brain instead of 20 to 40 million okay so subconscious <clears throat> mind is the million times stronger than us and we want to go and do it no matter what we are going to be even if we success successful what happens is that we are going to be a wounded warrior right we we win the battle, but we lose the war. Hmm. Us is our health, our relationship, right. our happiness, wow. and stuff like that. So that might not be the best way. So in my book, I explain what is the better way that have the way to enjoy our journey. Yeah, It is aligning your subconscious mind with your conscious decisions and putting your heart into it as well and bring the inspired actions with you. And then you are like a happy family in that train, all moving towards a, the same dest destination, exotic destination that you enjoy. It's, it <laughs> feels like that, you know? But right. What is the process? You might ask, what is the process? Is it hard or something like that? So I'm going to explain it because in my book, I have a 10 step process. But I'm going to summarize it in three steps. It's easier to remember for the audience. Okay. Maybe they get something out of it. So okay. it is like this. You want to reach a goal. You know that in order to build that building, it is not just think about it and then it appears. It's not like that. It has to go stage by stage. There are different trades that are working in there and adding things mm -hmm. up and level by level it goes up. And after a while, that building appears. Our goals are like that too. So we are thinking about a specific goal that we need to have in our life, the results that we need to have in our life. We have to break it down to smaller chunks. So okay. those are the action steps. Those action steps uh, are moving needle tasks. Something that moves us towards our goal. So we have to okay. find those. How do we find those? It's not hard. Everybody can find those. You can think about it. You can talk to your friends and you can even chat, ask ChatGPT to give me the tasks that I need to do in order to get that goal. You know, it is not hard to find those. The mm -hmm. hardest part is when you try to start doing those, your subconscious mm -hmm. mind says, sit down. You don't need to go anywhere. Because it's safer mm. in here. I don't want you to go anywhere. 
Just sit down. Mm -hmm. So the fear of, the, the, so you're imposed with different fears that comes from sub, subconscious mind. The fear of change, okay, which is very substantial. The fear of failure. It says yeah. that you're going to fail and you're going to be miserable and stuff like that. We have those thoughts in our head. The fear of success. The fear mm. is for, of success is even stronger than the fear of failure because you're fighting with your self image. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. So, so there are a lot of fears. So, so we have a hard time going through those tasks. That's why we delay whatever we have to do. We go pro procrastinate and we don't do those. So I suggest change the name of those tasks to little games. What happens? Okay. It's the same thing, but we all love to play games, but we don't, we hate to do the tasks. Little games or little yeah, games? Yeah, game, games. game. Yeah, game. Okay. Small game. Mm -hmm. So. You change the name to game and you can, you can even pick a game for, for that too. So you have list of tasks, you change the name to little games. And when you go to bed, what happens is usually we impose our subconscious mind flooded with worry, mm -hmm. anxiety, fear, blame, all those things, we review our mm -hmm. day, all the negative things that happen, all the things that we are worried about, about tomorrow. We just put all the information into our subconscious mind. How? Before we go to sleep, our subconscious mind's guard is wide open because we are in the alpha state. And okay. then we just impose all those information into our subconscious mind and we wake up tired out. We didn't do anything, but we are tired. Why? Because a subconscious mind is a strong, it's just, it is just processing all those information and make them stronger and stronger. So instead of that, let's do something else. Before we go to bed, we have the first process, which is game plan. Game plan okay. means that we think about the games that we want to play tomorrow. Those little games, the things, okay. tasks that we change the name. We think about those and plan, I'm going to play this game or that game and stuff. And then we sleep and we are programming our subconscious mind to have fun and play those games. And then right. when we wake up, it is the second part of the process. It is called warm up. When you are mm -hmm. serious about the sport, you know that you cannot go ahead and do the sport. You have to have the warm up. You have to prepare your body. So mm -hmm. the warm up is mental rehearsal. Mental rehearsal is as you are waking up, you haven't even opened your eyes yet. You start playing that game in your head. Mm -hmm. And when you are playing the game in your head, what happens is that you're preparing for that game. Okay. And you even see yourself having that kind of joyful moments of winning and you are on top of the podium and celebrating. You see yourself in those moments playing those little games. And then you wake up and go during the day. You can only play those games because you just imposed your subconscious mind two times. When before right. going to sleep, when right after you wake up. Now your subconscious mind is on board with you. You just play that mm -hmm. game during the day. And then the next day you do the same thing. Next day you do the same thing. And then all of a sudden you're at your destination with You've fun changed. and joy. Yeah. I like so it. So the third step is playing. So the first one was game plan before game you plan, go to warm up. Mm -hmm. The second one was warm up or mental rehearsal, which is right after you wake up. And the third one is just playing during the day. The three step it. process. And then. All right. Sure. Go ahead, because we're going to have to wrap it up, but go ahead. Yeah, 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 sure. So if viewers or listeners try this game and they find it enjoyable, for a week they can try it, and then they give me a call or can contact me through my website or something, I'm mm -hmm. just going to give them something that turbocharges that process for them for free. Oh, nice. 
Yeah. So how can the listeners connect with you and, and learn more about your work? Sure. So, so. the best uh, method of contact is through my website. So the website is joyfulfix.com. Okay. When you go to that website, there's a contact page. In that contact page, they have a couple of options. One is that a little quiz that I've created, it is called uh, life quality assessment. Okay. So it gives them uh, a score based on health, wealth, relationship, and happiness. Those four aspects. Okay. Those are just the four tires of a car. If one is flat, we cannot move far. We have to do something about it. But sometimes we mm -hmm. don't know the symptoms. So that quiz helps them to, free quiz helps them to find what they were, that is priority for them to work on. So there's that quiz that they can take. The other thing they can do in there is that record their voice. So they can record their voice and I received it as a private and secure message. And then we mm -hmm. connect. We can have free consultation. I give them the roadmap, wherever they are in life, wherever they want to be, and the barriers in the way, and the way that they can go through those barriers, and they can take that path themselves, or I can help them out. So it's very simple. And they okay. have access to that uh, book as well. So there is a link in my website for the book. So joyfulfix.com slash book. So they can find the book, the information in there. There are two options. One is buying it through Amazon, the paperback. And I recently released a package that is uh, audio book and ebook com combined. Mm. And so they, they can grab it with a huge discount and then just go through the book and there are a lot of other things that is discussed that we didn't have time to just discuss it in here. So yeah. you find it in the book. Yeah. We may have to do a part two to get to, to some specifics because there is a lot of information. Uh, the heart wall, I know we talked about that, which was very insightful, but you have a lot of interesting concepts in that book. And if you're open, We'll, sure. we'll do a part two to this podcast no and, and dive into some of those different concepts in the book. But thank you, Farzan, uh, for sharing you. your incredible journey and insights on how to unlock true joy. That's very important and potential through emotional healing and your experiences and the joyful fixed quantum healing modality are truly inspiring. And for our listeners, make sure to subscribe to Hindsight the Podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks again, Farzan. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. To, no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.